Um, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hiya. Oh, oh, she's very. <laughs> Don't normally have a girl say hello. He doesn't have a restraining order against me, so. <laughs> hello. Um, my number's 07540787944, since you were wondering. And if you've got any pity in you, that'd be nice. <laughs> so, yeah, hello. My name's Tom. I'm from Salford. For those of. Oh. <laughs> Someone in from Salford at the back? Oh, good. You've done well to be out this late. Most can't do to the tag. For those of you who don't know, Salford's kind of like the parasitic twin of Manchester. Uh, there's this saying in Salford, which is, give us your fucking wallet. Um, Went to school in Salford, went to quite a rough school. Its Ofsted rating wasn't so much good or satisfactory. It was, don't send your kids there, because they're fucking feral. <laughs> if your kid's got four legs and a tail, send it by all means. But otherwise, no. Uh, I remember getting predicted G at GCSE English, and I said, I didn't know it went lower than F. And the teacher went, that's all the fucking alphabet works. <laughs> It might have had something to do with my dyslexia. Are there any other dyslexics in the audience tonight? That's a shame because there is power in numbers. Because <laughs> we can do numbers. <laughs> I ended up getting diagnosed when it took me a year to read Lord of the Rings. So in the end, I just switched the subtitles off. There is no known cure for dyslexia, but there are dyslexic conspiracy theorists who think that there is a cure, just it's been written down and those fuckers can't read it. <laughs> Some people think that drugs causes dyslexia. It's not true, just no one's ever wanted to read a book whilst high. <laughs> no one's ever gone, right, where's Catcher in the Rye? <laughs> And dyslexia it is a proper learning disability, but it doesn't get the respect or car parking opportunities that it should. <laughs> uh, this is genuinely true. Uh, did anyone go to a school that was like quite rough? Yeah. Oh, hello. Um, Hi. Did, was your school rough enough to have a scandal? A scandal means something that, like, shouldn't have happened. <laughs> like, a bad thing that happened. Um, but I'll tell you about my scandal, whilst you think about it. Um, one of my teachers is a convicted sex offender. <laughs> Genuinely true, that, right? Right, what he would do, he would set up after school clubs, kids would go to the after school clubs and then he'd invite young boys back to his house where he would strip off to his boxer shorts, lie back on the bed and get young boys to cane his genitals until blood came out of his urethra. <laughs> and in exchange for their silence, he'd give them biscuits. When my mum heard, she went, dirty bastard, I hope they weren't hobnobs. <laughs> but that, that story, right, that annoys me, because number one, I went to his after school clubs. Number two, he never picked me. <laughs> so clearly thought I was an ugly fucking child. And number three, I was a fat little shit who would have appreciated the biscuit and kept his fucking mouth shut.
What I wouldn't have done for those biscuits. I'd have came the fuck out of his nuts. <laughs> He'd have had to take Monday off if I'd have had a fucking go at him. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, also genuinely true, right? So, where I'm from, um, do we all know Coronation Street? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, yeah, do we all know Curry, yeah? Um, do you know Weatherfield, where it's set? Yep. Right, well, that's based on my hometown. Right, but there are a few key differences between Weatherfield and Salford, right? Like, there's a lot less dog shit in Weatherfield. <laughs> I've never seen an episode of Coronation Street that starts with Ken Barlow walking to the Rovers like this. <laughs> Looking for a puddle to dip his shoe in. Walking past Roy's Rolls, which shut down because a pound bakery moved in round the corner. <laughs> and now it opens for one month a year to sell fireworks. And then he goes to the Rovers, orders a pint, gets offered whether or not he wants to buy a frozen stolen chicken with it. <laughs> or some Polish cigarettes, because Emily Bishop went on a cig run. <laughs> or some hot pot. It's going free because Betty cooked too much because she's off her face on ketamine. <laughs> but he just has his pint, goes home, and just before he gets in, he sees Fizz getting fingered behind a bin. <laughs> Never seen that episode. <laughs> um, I'll tell you this just before I go, right? Who in here's got a mum? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty popular. <laughs> uh, this is genuinely true. My mum once said, upon seeing a man with no arms and no legs, ah, oh, I bet he's sick of getting hats for Christmas. <laughs> What else would you buy him? <laughs> you can't buy him sunglasses because it's Christmas. And it'd make him look blind. <laughs> he doesn't need that on top of everything else. You guys have been lovely. I've been Tom Shaw. Have a great night. Catch you in a bit. <laughs>